Hey guys, this is John. This is a quick heads up that we have an entirely new and totally free chessable course. It is the short and sweet Nidorf Sicilian. Yes, the ever popular and extremely well respected Nidorf Sicilian. Uh, Chaldean King, if you're watching right now, which I'm sure you are, you'll be happy to know about this. And it is by Grandmaster Alex Kolovich. Alex, super nice guy. I got to meet him in person at the World Championship, actually, back in November in London. He was nice enough to create this short and sweet course for Chessable members. And it's actually based on his The Knight of Sicilian Simplified, which is his full length course. But he was able to condense his course down to 20 essential lines. So lines that he considers to be uh, critical to understanding The Knight of Sicilian. And he, it also comes with 50 minutes of video sync instruction as well. So free 50 minutes of video having to do with these lines. And I just wanted to let you guys know about this because, uh, hey, free stuff is great. We definitely believe in giving away free content along with our paid content on Chessable. And the Short and Sweet series has been really popular. It's a good way to get an overview of a particular opening. So let's just take a brief look at this. You can see that already 1,100 users are studying this. All you need is a Chessable account in order to access it. You don't need to pay anything. There's 2,200 words of instruction. As I already said, 20 lines. The average depth... 11.9 moves, so not super duper deep. Kolovich does a good job of uh, giving you the lay of the land and explaining in plain English what some of the main ideas are in the position. Let's click into this. I didn't mean for my shirt to uh, match the logo for this short and sweet Knight of Sicilian, by the way, but just kind of worked out that way. <laughs> so let's click into it. I guess I'll talk about the video sync first of all, because some of you guys might not know about this capability that we have on Chessable, but it's really cool. So, you know, it's 50 minutes of video sync and he goes through these lines. And the way it works is, so you can click to any point in this video. Okay, so right here, we're looking at a line where white plays F4. And if you turn, you toggle this on, so filter based on video, it actually automatically pulls up, uh, it scans the board for the position and it pulls up the relevant line. So this line he's going over here has to do with F4. And you can click right into that line and see what Kolovich is talking about. It's just a nice way to get that synced instruction. We're really proud of and happy about this feature and we've got a lot of positive feedback on it. We have many courses now that are video synced. So if we go back to just some of the lines here, if you're interested in the Night Orf or you have experience in it, uh, so the Night Orf Sicilian, just for the record, is this move right here, A6 by Black on move five. So this course just deals with this position in the open Sicilian. Doesn't deal with anti-Sicilians. Maybe in the future he'll make a short and sweet for anti-Sicilians. Uh, Kolovich definitely favors E5 approaches. That's one thing you might be interested in versus the Shaven Engine approach. I'm sure I butchered that pronunciation where Black plays E6 instead. There are uh, a couple lines where he recommends E6, most notably against the bishop g5 variation, which we'll look at in a second, but that's pretty standard. But otherwise, he generally prefers playing E5, the most knight or fee type push, and kicking that knight away from the center. So here's a line where he gives bishop e7, and this is the English attack approach for white. So white playing f3 and then putting the queen on d2, start of an aggressive plan. White looking to castle queenside and then typically throw these kingside king pawns forward at black, who is probably looking to castle on the kingside. And Kolovich says it's worth playing h5, and he describes in the video sync how he thinks this trade-off, you know, slight weakening of the kingside by making this h-pawn push, but the upside is that you get to prevent white from playing, B, from playing g4. And he gives a line here where white jumps with the knight into d5, and then we capture and put the bishop on f5 and develop the knight through d7. So uh, his approach right there is more of a pro prophylactic approach against the English attack. I would also favor this from the black side. I could definitely see myself playing this just to try to put a stop to this annoying plan of white pushing the king side pawns. Going back in the bishop g5 variation, which is definitely something I took a look at first. And you can get through these lines pretty fast, by the way. That's one of the virtues of the short and sweet. It doesn't profess to be an end-all be-all for learning an opening. You know, we would never claim that, but it's just a good way to get a brief lay of the land in the opening, assimilate some main ideas. 
even decide if you like the opening at all. I mean, I think that's important before you invest a ton of time into studying a line. Just decide if you have a feel for the variations. So, because I play this line from the white side, bishop g5 on move six, which traditionally has been considered one of the strongest moves. I immediately went to this and had a look at what Alex recommends. So he does recommend e6 here. e5, by the way, it kind of misses the mark in this position because it would be walking straight into uh, some issues with the d5 square, especially if black were to play e5. White can even play bishop takes f6 right away. Queen takes f6, knight d5 with tempo on the queen. So e6 is usually a better option if black's going to move the e pawn. f4. And now he likes this line, which he calls the uh, improved poison pawn variation, which Maxime vachier le Grave, who is definitely the uh, contemporary Nidorf expert for, for the black side of the equation these days, you know, we had Bobby Fischer and then Gary Kasparov, two of the biggest proponents of the Nidorf, but MVL is kind of taking up the banner in this day and age. And yeah, Kolovich proposes this h6, bishop h4, queen b6 approach going after the so-called poison pawn on b2. Very interesting dynamic suggestion here. And you can see white's going to be trying to gain some compensation by pushing in the center. So... If you're curious about what he recommends, that's what he likes against bishop g5. Just a couple of other lines that caught my eye. There was one, I think it's the very last line of the uh, course, by the way, that I think illustrates some nice Nidorf ideas. So going through this, this is white playing bishop e2. You know, calm move. Totally fine with to play this way. White usually looking to castle on the king side. And again, Kolovich recommends e5, kicking that knight. Knight b3, bishop e7, castle, castle. a4, as Kolovich writes, a useful move limiting black's queenside play. Now, bishop e6, very often in this repertoire, you'll see these bishops side by side. It's kind of the natural square for the light square bishop uh, when black has pushed e5. Bishop f3, trying to gain a stranglehold on d5. Knight bd7, also a very Nidorf-like development for black, bringing the knight to d7 rather than c6. I also played a classical Sicilian, and in the classical Sicilian, black is putting the knight on c6 straight away. But in the Nidorf, you more so often see black playing knight bd7. And I just thought this maneuver that Kolovich gives was pretty cool. So in this position, playing queen to b8, seemingly a, a passive approach, putting the queen here. But one idea which he gives is that you can play the bishop to d8 after that, and activate it, activate it via the queen side. So the bishop pops out to a5 here, attacking this knight on c3, pinning it to the rook on e1, and then he proposes putting the queen back on c7. He mentions that MVL has also used this sort of idea in the past. Black might be able to play knight c5 coming up. So some cool kind of innovative approaches to, at least innovative to me, having only um, you know a basic understanding of, of some Nidorf lines so this is the short and sweet Nidorf Sicilian free 20 line, 50 minute video synced course. All you need is a chessable account. Uh, also, if you're really enjoying this, definitely take a look at the Nidorf Simplified, which is the, the full length course by Grandmaster Kolovich. And this one, if you're curious, has 400 students right now, about 25,000 words of instruction. So significantly longer. 11 hours of paid video. There's also some free video on this one. A couple other recent developments, as long as I'm talking about other courses. Uh, we published Back to Basics Tactics by Dan Heisman, who is a fantastic instructor. Uh, he is, is one of the preeminent instructors, in my opinion, for beginning and intermediate players. And he has a whole host of books that uh, fortunately I think we have a good chance of getting on Chessable over time, but this is his first one to, to be on Chessable. It's Back to Basics Tactics. And I did a, a preview for Tune Your Chess Tactics Antenna recently. If you like Tune Your Chess Tactics Antenna, or you're even looking for something a little bit easier than Tune Your Chess Tactics Antenna, so if you're solidly in the beginner range, I think this book, Back to Basics Tactics, is awesome. Uh, we can just look at the raw stats real quick. 36,000 words of instruction, 608 trainable variations. And if you look at the chapter breakdown, just some excellent fundamental stuff here. Safety and counting. So counting referring to situations involving attackers and defenders. 
number of standard tactical themes, trapped pieces, pins, skewers, double threats, removal of the guard, uh, checkmates, so various checkmate patterns, defensive tactics, often neglected. And I haven't looked at these chapters a little bit later, as you can see, I'm still working through this book. As a trainer myself, I'm always interested in uh, different trainers' approaches. Heisman is also a well-known coach in addition to being an author. But just as an example, some of the, the stuff in the safety and counting, I mean, he gives an example of, or an explanation of counting here. Um, yeah, let's maybe click into a line just to see. So a beginner's sequence. He says, the following common beginner sequence involves counting on F7 and is a terrific example of how to calculate material. If you understand this example, you understand a lot about material value. And he demonstrates a situation here. If you play E4, E5 for either color, you might be familiar with this. White jumping into G5, attacking this pawn on F7. Black castling, and then white gives this move a question mark, which I think is very fair. Exchanging the two minor pieces for the rook and the pawn. And he talks about the evaluation of this position and how even though materially it's equal, in fact, this trade favors black. So good example of simply raw calculation or counting, I should say, like who's coming out ahead in scenarios where there's multiple attackers and defenders, but also kind of situational stuff like that. So yeah, if you're a beginner, I would highly recommend this book. And one final title, which we're very excited about, also recently released. Uh, My Great Predecessors by Gary Kasparov, none other than Mr. Gary himself. Yes, the former world champion. So this is a, a highly respected series of books on all of the world champions, at least up until the time that Kasparov wrote this book. So Magnus Carlsen not included because these books were written before Carlsen was world champion. But we have volume one on Chessable now. And this is a behemoth of a book. See how many words of instruction, 286,000 plus words of instruction. And we also made trainable variations in this. So uh, well done to our chessable team and also the beta testers who helped significantly in making this. So you can go in and train the lines in this book. And you can see it's broken up by world champions. So we have Wilhelm or William Steinitz. Yeah, William the first. This is chapter three. Just before Steinitz, that's where we're going to find Guys like Morphy, Anderson, fantastic players like that. Manuel Lasker. We all know Capablanca, Alexander Alekhine. Those are those world champions are all covered in this first book. Uh, maybe I can just show the kind of trainable variation approach. You don't have to train the variations. You can just go through and you know click on any variation and just read the pros if you want. There's a lot of background history about these world champions. You know, for example little biography on Steinitz here. But again, just to show you how you would train these variations, uh, let's give one a try here. So knight f6, okay. I think I see the answer here I'm gonna take. And then I'm thinking about knight f7 check with the fork. That does win the exchange could also think about giving a check here and maybe pushing the king and then potentially trying to quickly bring a rook to g1. I think I like that even better. This knight f7 looks decent, but black can force the queens off the board after that. And yeah, white is down material here, so I think I would go for this check. Yeah, king g8. And now I really want to get this rook over to g1. So maybe just king h1, easiest way to accomplish this. That seems decent. Okay, and I got it correct. And this was a game Steinitz versus Mongridi. Yeah, and Rook G1 will follow with mate. So if you're interested in training some uh, positions in games from world champions, this is a great resource. Also, this is just a great book for increasing your knowledge of chess. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this preview of the short and sweet Knight of Sicilian and a couple of these other courses. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.